Hi there. I want to show you our next project, pen and ink and watercolor and a little bit of oil pastel. We're going to do this peacock. But you've probably seen this at the studio. Maybe some of you have done it. I've changed uh, some of, of the drawing. Kind of simplified it a little bit. So right here I've started with, oopsie, it's glaring, the pen and ink, the drawing and the pen and ink. And I'm gonna show you what to do next with the oil pastel and watercolor. So I hope you guys like this one, I love it. Um, it's on watercolor paper, pen and ink, pencil, a little bit of oil pastel, watercolor. Let's try it. Okay, here we go. If you have a piece of watercolor paper, that would be great. If you don't and you just have cardstock paper, that's okay too. Copy paper, which I'm drawing on right now, doesn't really hold up to watercolor. I'm gonna take, a, you guys take a pencil, I'm taking a Sharpie. And like I said, I changed it a little bit. But, if you want to challenge yourself, do this one with the more peacock feathers. Okay, so what I did, I'm going to start out with his head. It looks like an oval shape. It's a little, here's the middle of the page. It's a little, it's higher than the middle. So I'm going to do an oval here in pencil. I'm going to make his beak. I'm going to make his eye area. He looks angry. These are the white spots. And then I'm gonna take his neck and just go down, goes a little wider as it goes down to the bottom of the page. And then I'm gonna switch over to a skinnier Sharpie, but you're still using pencil and I'm just going to start doing these and overlap, you know, like half circles. Okay. My girlfriend Lisa had peacocks around her property. She lives in Vista. And it was so, well, first of all, their call is very different. It almost sounds like a cat sometimes, or a baby crying. And they would always jump on the roof of her house or her garage. I had some peacock feathers at the studio. I don't, with the remodel, I don't know what happened to them. I'll have to get some more. A really brilliant blue and green. Okay, then we have that. <clears throat> now all of the the peacock feathers are growing, are growing, are well, I guess out of this part of his body. So see these white lines that the quills, I guess they call it. They're growing. They're coming out of this green area that's back here. So I'm gonna put them. And it's like a fan shape, right? I want to leave room for this and all these, well, I guess, feathers come out of here. Okay. So after you do this in pencil, you can um, ink it in with, um, e this is a fine point Sharpie, this is an ultra fine point Sharpie. You want to use Sharpie or any kind of permanent black marker because then when we do the watercolors it won't bleed, the ink won't bleed.
Oops. Okay, my feathers turned out so puny and small. If you guys make your guys yours bigger, that'd be great. Or you could do more of them. And I kind of, I, I went fast. Look how big these ones are. Comparison. <laughs> Mine look funny. Okay. Next. So after pencil, then you're going to do the Sharpie. Um, and you would do... You know, in pencil, you would erase the lines. So you don't need that line, for example. Okay, let's switch over to my watercolor paper. And I really like these. Um, I'm just using Prang watercolors. Okay. Prang. And I got a 16, looks like a 16 pan set. Can't really get those brilliant blues and greens, so I've decided to use my oil pastel and put some of this around it so that I get those brilliant colors. And remember the watercolor will go over that. And then I've got this blue. There's some brown in there too, and then a dark blue. My design and pattern might not be the same. Inside I've got a really dark blue. Oops, I forgot green on this guy. Okay, and you can also do, I see some green around it, so you can do some green around there. If you can find the edge of this, and it makes a skinnier line. The other thing I can do, which I didn't think about, is this white oil pastel, or you can use that wax rouge, this crayon. We can do, we can put that on there. You gotta press kind of hard. And I'm just gonna make some more. Now with the pen and ink pen, I started to go, I noticed that these black lines or dark blue, I started to do um, this around the edge. And I didn't do all of them because I started getting carpal tunnel in my hands. No. I just figured I'd do the top ones because our view, our um, eye, eye is kind of centralized on his face. So, but if you want to go and take the time to go all the way down and do all of those, that, that would look awesome. And I'm just making little hatching marks. And I did these too. Um, okay, let's add some watercolor. Now, I have some different size brushes here. I probably need, I might need a smaller one, I'm not sure. When you have your watercolor set, uh, remember that you, in watercolors, it's a transparent medium. So it's different than acrylics. So when you paint a dark color in your picture, 
and say you wanted to go back and make it lighter, you a light color will never cover that because this is transparent paint, you can see through it. If it was acrylics and I painted that color and I later wanted to go to a light color, all you do is you let that dry and then you can paint over. So in watercolors, it's important to remember to work from light colors to dark colors. Um, and the other thing is, uh, you can um, you can wet these a little bit ahead of time. These are semi moist, and I think it's hard to remember. Look at I got green in there. It is hard to remember to rinse your brush every time. You don't want to flood it with water. And the other thing to remember is um, you. Watercolor brushes, brushes in general, even acrylics, they have a certain shape for you know different purposes. So you want to be really gentle with the brush and not be smat, smashing it or anything like that. You want it to keep its shape. So watercolor brushes are softer bristles than acrylic because watercolor is, you know, maybe 80% water or 90% and then the rest pigment, it's very watery. Acrylic paints is hardly any water, and so you need a stiffer brush to move the heavier paint. So watercolors you use um, the softer brushes. Now I'm just gonna mix, I hope you can see this, this green. And so see, I'm just kind of loading the brush and moving it over here. And I'm gonna put this beautiful green by here. Now this kind of brush would have worked also. And then when you're brushing, yeah, it really does look good with the darker. I can, after the fact, after it's dry, I can come back with more Sharpie and put more of those. The other thing you want to remember about your brushes is that this is pulling a brush. This is pushing. See how the hairs are going backwards? It's really bad for a brush. So it's like, it's like when you, you pet a dog or a cat, you would pet them the way their fur goes, not opposite. So this is pulling a brush and this is pushing, which is not that good for a brush. And then I can wet it and get it back into its shape. I'm going to switch over to this one. Let's try some really bright green. Now, watercolors is also best to not do a ton of layers. And the reason why is because the paper will get so wet that it will start to peel and fall apart. Especially if you're doing this project with um, cardstock paper, you want to not use a ton of water. So these big brushes hold a ton of water. You might have to just dab some off. Okay. Now, I want to do the blue, but because this is wet right now, if I do the blue and it touches that, the blue will go into there. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit. I can get some brown, maybe some orange. And do these areas. Okay, next, I can use a blow dryer to dry this if I wanted to work right away. Black is a dark color, it's going to be used last. Let's see, this is a kind of a turquoisey blue. See the difference with this blue? Either one will work but I like the turquoise to start out with. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's pretty. Okay, I hope you can't hear this on the video, but my stomach is growling. It's not the peacock's noise. There we go. If I take the pigment just out of here instead of adding water, it's very um, concentrated and so it goes on a little darker. That's looking good. Now I'm going to take some dark blue and I see some shadows on one side. I'm going to put those in. How do you soften? If this made a hard line, because the blue, if the light blue had dried, it'd make a tougher edge, I would just take the tip of my brush and go on both to encourage them to blend. See where the green was wet? So the blue bled into the green. I'm not too worried about it, but you could just lightly maybe lift it off and then come back with green in a little bit. Not right now, it's too wet. Okay, the background. The background is pretty dark. Um, I'm gonna get green this bluish green. I'm gonna add a little bit of black to it. Be careful because the black is very strong. A little bit goes a long way. See how it just takes over the color? Now it always looks darker on the tray than on the actual paper. Oh, see, barely any black and it took over that pile. I don't really want to use black, black, but. So now, I'm going to work in, a, in an area, one area at a time and kind of fill this in so it's dark in the background. It's not as dark as the picture, but that's okay. In watercolors, you have to work kind of quickly because it dries fast. <clears throat> stomach growling and I just ate something. Remember with these big brushes, don't let it all go all the way in the water. It'll just add too much water and it'll dilute it too much. You can see my white oil pastel lines are showing up a little bit. That's why I was telling you to press hard. Because otherwise they don't show up that great. Oh, 
almost done. There we go. Now I'm going to take a little brush for his beak, which looks grayish to me. So Oh, it went on opaque. That's weird. The white is kind of opaque. So I'm going to add a little water to it because I want the details to show up. You can do this with a Sharpie. I, I forgot to check and see if the blue was even dry, but it, thank goodness it is. Okay. Now you don't want to go back over too much because it'll start leaving this weird mark where the watercolor, the old, the first layer has dried and then the new layer put on, it kind of shows a funny mark. So I'm just touching up a few areas that I see. Seems like I need a color in there. I will just add some more turquoise. Okay. And then once it dries, I think I will go back and do some more of these ink lines around all the edges because I think that looks cool. Alrighty, you guys. This was fun. Really fun. I think that the advanced students could definitely do some more of the peacock feathers. Um, you know, maybe even try some. Ah! You know, try some of this other green in here. It takes a little time to do each one. I could have done it when it was wet, a little bit wet. You know, see how you like that? I'm not sure that I like it, so I'll kind of blend it in a little. But anyways, experiment, that would be great. I kind of don't like the dark green in there. Oh, and my blue came back out. That's all right. Okay, it's good to not mess with it too much. <laughs> you start overworking. Watercolors are really easy to overwork. When we finished, I noticed some things I wanted to change and <laughs> you know how in class, sometimes I make you guys do, do you think you're done and I have you do more and more and more. Well, I do it to myself too because I saw some things that I wanted to add to it. Number one, I finished filling in with my fine point Sharpie the rest of these feathers. And number two is I see that there was some more dark green growing out of the quills. So you can take a pointy brush or a flat brush. That's, and I took green, dark green and a little bit of black. I want it to be dark green, not not totally black. And do you see on this side, the green that I added? So now I'll show you on this side. So some of them are sticking out from here and some of them are wrapping around. Okay, I think it looks a little more feathery like that. 
And the other thing, I do preview the videos, or I should. I think I, I do most of them. I realized that you can't really see my palette where I was mixing in the video. Especially when I did this background, um, the palette was out, this palette was out of the picture. So what I did for this background was I took this dark blue, that's the turquoise -y. this is more like an ultramarine blue, and I took this dark green, and then I added a tiny bit of black, which I have black right here. And that's how I got that color for the background. Okay? Now we're done. Unless any one of you see anything else, you can let me know. I think the other thing I would have done is add more of these light greens with the oil pastel too, because they show up nicely. So, I mean, here's the colors I used. I don't know that I can add it now. Let me try. No, it doesn't show up now. So the oil pastel, when I put it on first and I put the watercolor over it, it acts like a resist, like a crayon. Like we talked about those Easter eggs that you draw on the egg with that white wax crayon. So the, the, the light green, oh, maybe it was this one. It doesn't show up as much as if I had done it before. Okay, now we're done. See you next time.